Okay, we have here today an interesting integral from the Columbia integration, B2022. This was problem number 28. We have the integral from pi over three to five pi over six of the square root of cosecant x minus sine x dx. Okay, the interesting thing about this one for me was that I actually did the same problem on the MIT integration, but it was an indefinite integral. So the real difference here is we have these bounds and I think they strategically created these bounds to make it a little tricky for us. So what I'm gonna do is start as much as you're gonna manipulate this cosecant and sine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write this just in terms of sine. So I'm gonna write this as one over sine x. And then here we're gonna have our minus sine x. What I'll do to get a common denominator, I'll multiply the top and bottom by sine of x. And so this is gonna become sine squared x here. And then putting these together with the common denominator, we're gonna have one minus sine squared x over sine x. But then I can write one minus sine squared x, I can write this as cosine squared x over sine x. And so now we'll take this and we'll put this back into our integral. So I'm gonna have this cosine squared x over sine x all under one radical. So from here, what I can do is separate the numerator and denominator. So the denominator is just gonna be square root of sine x. And now taking the square root of cosine squared x, we have to be careful because technically this should be cosine, this should be absolute value of cosine x. Now in a lot of cases, what's gonna happen here is we're gonna just drop our absolute value because we determine what's inside is always positive, but we need to check that. Now cosine is gonna be positive in quadrant one. So it's gonna be positive from pi over three all the way to pi over two, but then five pi over six goes into the second quadrant. At five pi over six, cosine's negative. So we really can't drop the absolute value there. We need to leave that. But of course, if we leave the absolute value on there, it's gonna be kind of awkward to integrate it. So what I'm gonna do is actually break this up into two regions. So I'm gonna split this so that we're covering the first quadrant and second quadrant. So to cover the first quadrant, I'm gonna have my first integral go from pi over three to pi over two. And because in the first quadrant, cosine's always positive, here I can just drop my absolute value, right? And we're just gonna write this as cosine x over square root of sine x dx. And then for the second integral, now we're gonna go from pi over two to cover the second quadrant. We're gonna go from pi over two to this upper bound, which is five pi over six. And then here in the second quadrant, cosine is always negative. So the way to handle the absolute value there is just reverse the sine. So we'll multiply by a minus one there, and we have minus cos x square root of sine x. And I think I'll just take this minus sine and bring it out front of the integral. And now we have the same integrand in both cases. I'm gonna do a u substitution, and we're gonna do the same u substitution for both of these. So I'm gonna call my u equal to sine x. And then we'll take a derivative and we'll find that's just cos sine x dx, which we have in the numerator in both cases. So we'll go ahead and we'll make this substitution. So let's see, when we have pi over two here, sine of pi over two is gonna give me one from the up, one for the upper bound here. Then for pi over three, sine of pi over three is gonna give me square root of three over two. And then our integral is just gonna become du over the square root of u, but I'm gonna write that as u to the minus one half. And then really similar over here, plugging five pi over six in for sine x, that's gonna give me one half plugging pi over two, and for sine x, sine of pi over two is gonna give me one. And then here, this is gonna be the same thing. This is gonna be just u to the minus one half du. Then I'm gonna take this minus sign, make it a plus, and use it to change my bounds to swap them so that we're gonna get this back to, we're gonna make, we're gonna make this one half to one. And then we can integrate. This is gonna give me two square root of u, evaluated from square root of three over two to one. And then we'll do it again, we'll have two square root of u, and this is gonna be evaluated from one half to one. You may wanna to try to consolidate the two integrals, but I don't really think it saves a lot of work in this case, so I just decided to leave it this way. And next I'm just gonna clean up the board and we can finish this off. Okay, so now we just need to kind of evaluate carefully. So first plugging in one, square root of one is one, so this is gonna give me a two, minus plugging a square root of three over two in here. This is the tricky part. This is gonna give me the fourth root of three because we have the square root of three inside a square root, and then we're gonna have a square root of two in the denominator. And then here, this is gonna be the exact same thing we had over here. So this is gonna give me a two, another two over here, minus when we plug one half in here, this is gonna give me two over square root of two. And then I think I'm just gonna rationalize this. So when I do that, multiply by square root of two over square root of two, this is gonna just cancel with this. I'll do the same thing over here, rationalizing it and this two is gonna cancel with this square root of two times square root of two here. We can add the two and the two here, and that's gonna give me a four. So when I put this all together for my final solution, I'm gonna have just four 
minus the square root of two times the fourth root of three minus the square root of two plus C. Nope, just kidding. <laughs> okay, so we kind of end up with an ugly answer there, but that's how it is sometimes. So I'm gonna stop it there. Thanks everyone for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day.